printing money is bad, mm -hmm. right? It's inflationary. Mm -hmm. uh, but borrowing printed money is insane. <laughs> So the injection point where the new money enters circulation makes all the difference in the world. And the, the von Mises people, the libertarians, have an adage in a, in a fiat si uh, society, hmm. whoever spends the money first gets the best use out of it. Because after you spend it, then it's actually diluted. It lo loses its potency. Right. right because right, it right. dilutes the rest of the supply. I think on my audio tape, I do the analogy of a you know a bunch of people coming over, and you've got an urn of coffee, and you just keep adding water <laughs> because you know you have no, more people yeah, coming. Yeah, this coffee's in. a little. Uh, yeah, it's a little know. weak, and it just gets weaker and weaker. But it looks like coffee. It sort of tastes like coffee. Still it, is coffee. And it's coffee, really, but it's mm. very weak. And so this is what's happening to your dollar while you save them, and and paying your debts off early, especially in the case of mortgage debt. That's the cheapest money you'll ever find. Yeah. And, and if you don't deploy that money in addition to the house that you mortgaged, <laughs> so you know you have two assets appreciating in value, at least you have a hope of keeping ahead of the inflation juggernaut because it just appears to me that there's a great deal of money to mo – a debt to monetize, a, a great deal of P, right, potential, potential money that could enter circulation – and just wreak havoc on the value of the dollar. Now, on the on the flip side of the mortgage side, I've heard plenty of friends of mine and people over the years that say, "Yeah, I get I get what Andy's saying, but you know, I would I really want to pay off my mortgage." Don't get it. So I'm not beholden to anybody because but in case what? here's what they say now. Yeah. Uh, in case something really bad happens, yeah. At least I know that I'm going to have a place to live. That's not true. Oh. Don't pay your taxes. Don't pay your insurance. Yeah, but that's only what three, four, five thousand dollars a year. Doesn't matter. Generally. Don't pay them and see what happens. Right. Let's say something really bad does happen, and you can't. And and you lose your you job and you can't get to work. You can't pay. Yeah, now you can't pay okay. your taxes. So who are you beholden to? Do you really own that house, or are you kind of just renting? I would it? think Hayes County, where I live, uh, going to knock on your door. Yeah, and take your house. Hello. And sell it. And hello. Okay, so. Now, think of it in these terms. So you work hard as you possibly can, and you pay off your mortgage, and then something catastrophic befalls you. You're no longer able to work, and your asset is your home. What do you do then? Sell it? You go to the bank and say, I'd like to borrow some of this equity back, and they say, well, you're sick. You can't work. But I Why guess, would we loan But I guess they figure out if it got that bad, and if I went to and worked at McDonald's, or Starbucks, at least I could still have my home. Oh, you're unable to. Something catastrophic has befallen you, and you're unable to do anything. Oh, you're unable to do anything? You're unable. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're unable. So now you approach the bank to borrow money. No. Not going to do that. Not going to give you money. What's your income? None. No. Zero. No. Well, think of how much more comfortable you'd be if you had the equity stripped to the bone in that puppy. And you had it sitting in a checking account or some other liquid asset uh, that you could tap into and I'll make your mortgage payment. maintain your existence. Yes, mm -hmm. because at that I mean, point, if that money was working for you already, I mean, you'd yeah. still be dipping in there to make your mortgage payment. Of course, you but would. But is that even sustainable? Well, is it sustainable? I mean, it's sustainable, I guess, if you're making enough every month on the money to make mm -hmm. the mortgage payment. Is well, that even correct? If even if you're going negative, Patrick, it depends upon your tax situation. Mm. So I know a great many young people, uh, successful young people, yeah. who do exactly that, pay their mortgages off as quickly as they can. Right. And so now we have a husband and wife, a couple that are working. They've put off having children, and they're in their mid-30s, and their mortgage is paid. Hallelujah. Yeah. But now they have no deductions, and they're in a tax bracket that chokes them. So it's like, okay, you're not paying interest, then you'll pay taxes. And it looks as if, Andrew, that regardless of how simple they make the tax uh, thing, if they get it done, that That's the mortgage, the deduction the that mortgage stays. interest is going to stay, right? That's the one that stays. And they do that because uh, housing really drives a lot of the economy, and they don't want to squash that. Yeah, right, yeah, it does. And resort uh, resort real estate also is a great – so for that – Council for that couple, yeah. uh, you know, mid 30s to early 40s, uh, that has done this, has bulk paid their mortgage down mm -hmm. at a time when interest rates are historic lows, at a time when you should be loading up on mortgage interest. What's my counsel to those folks? Well, it is hey, 
uh, strip the equity from this house, take that cash, and buy another productive investment. Buy yourself a beach house. <laughs> and rent buy it yourself out, a, and yeah, rent it out exactly. Buy yourself an investment property if you're if real estate is what makes you happy. I'm I'm just a little nervous about overbulking uh, with real estate, but I certainly have my own real estate, and as I've said on past shows, 85% of my money is in gold and silver coin, American rare coin. But 15, the other 15% real estate's at the top of the list. Can you even, uh, is it even a doable thing to say, uh, take that money out of your house that you paid off, buy a, a piece of uh, rental real estate sure. outside or even inside the city where you live and have somebody else manage it for you? Yeah. Can you still make money doing that? And they even have these real estate investment trusts. But, you know, until you have your second home in a resort area that's easily rented. That's that's what you like, huh? Yeah. In other words, something in the Florida's, uh, South Carolina, these kind of places. Yeah, something on the Florida coast, something close to the water, something close to golf, something on a mountain lake, something in a resort. Hawaii, yeah, Man. well, good luck buying there, but yeah, you get the point. Yeah. And something close to where you live, like where do you go when you take off for the summer and go on vacation? Well, everybody else goes there too. <laughs> and and what you should do is buy that second piece of, because you're allowed to have your second home. Do you write that and, interest off too? Yes, you can. Well, really? I didn't yes, know that. Yes, you know. can. Really? Yes. That's, yes. Pretty, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So your second home, kind of like your first home. And your ability to make t- so until you're maximizing those deductions, I don't think I would look at a third rental commercial, you know, where you're a landlord and somebody else is a tenant. And if you must, then you look at the real estate investment trusts. But I would urge people to stay away from commercial brick and mortar stores, big box stores, and things like that. Over the market is overcrowded with capacity because. We're still in that phase where, you know, you put your goods in a store and people come and look at them and and then pay you and you pay rent and so forth. Mm -hmm. As that business model evaporates, the demand for that sort of space will evaporate. Oh, it's evaporating pretty quickly, too. (laughs) Sears is right at the top, huh? But warehouses, 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 warehouse space. people like. Right, as the Amazons and the Targets and the Kmarts shift to this a distribution model that involves you calling them up and saying, send me a pair of 30, 30 Which is, they're all jeans. going to that, right? Right. right. Walmart's right. trying to do it. You know, right, do it. Yeah. right, mm-hmm. right. So yeah. as that model makes the shift, the need for the brick-and-mortar shopping center type real estate is lessened, but the need for warehouse space is heightened. Uh, and same thing with the demographic as people are um, – gravitating to the low end of the wage scale, the the chasm between the haves and the have-nots is getting wider. I was curious uh, hmm. as to how many new millionaires. Did we talk about that last no, week? I don't think I, so. No. I get this amazing statistic that we make 1,500 new millionaires in the United States every single day. 1,500? Every day. And what's the uh, definition for a millionaire? A million dollars in net worth. Net worth. So, oh, okay. So, so that would be, you mean your home? But oh, your home minus what you owe on it. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Your your net worth, a million. So, net worth. point is the the number of poor people is legendary, right? So the chasm between the haves and the have-nots is getting wider, and you have more people having more, and I, th- I believe the count was 11 million millionaires in the United States. So I think it was one in 236. Mitchell did the numbers for me. Thank you, Mitchell. Mm-hmm. And so one person in every 236 in the United States is a millionaire. And we're minting 1,500 new ones every day. So, you know, those folks are going to be there. It's not like the the class of folks that spend money and have are going to disappear. Uh, we may widen the gap in that the middle class disappears. Mm-hmm. And you're either on the bottom or the top. Nothing in the middle. That's uh, certainly the way it looks. 